Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Update Your Plate, How to Choose a Healthy Eating Plan. We're not going to promise that we're going to change your life today, but I won't be surprised if we do. Get ready for some fun and some really valuable information. I'm going to be your moderator for the next hour, but you are going to be a very important part of what we do. We are going to ask you to share your thoughts and polls to make sure that we're providing you the information that you want. Feel free to ask questions at any time, and there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. You can see the bottom of your screen. Uh, if you're talking, if you're joining us today using your smartphone, there's a question mark symbol at the top of your smartphone screen. Just click on that, type in the question, and we will be happy to answer it in real time. If you're joining us on your laptop or your PC, there's a message box that says type message here. Just enter what you want to know and we'll have our, our guest speaker answer it for you in real time. And at the end, stick around because we're going to have a webinar survey where we would love to get information from you as well. Now, as I mentioned, I'm your host, but the star of the show is Jendi Newman. She's a registered diabetic and a certified diabetes educator, and she's been around the block once or twice on these topics, 25 years providing nutrition counsel. And she's done this not just in the Pacific Northwest, she's been in Ohio, Southeast Alaska, and she's a proud beaver, and she loves to cook and garden and kayak. Jendi, so great to have you here today, and we have a lot of people on the line, more than 150 people attending. They all want to know what you know. Welcome. Well, thank you, Randy, and welcome, everyone, whether you're listening to the live webinar or um, later to the recorded version. Um, hope you will find um, some nuggets to improve your health um, today. So Americans are not alone in their quest um, to make some healthier choices. So if we see where, in general, Americans are, um, the Healthy Eating Index um, is done every, um, I think it's every three to five years, um, and the years that they most currently had data for were 2013 and 2014. And out of a scale of up to 100, the healthy eating index was 59. So that shows that Americans you know, do not align with even the dietary guidelines for Americans. Um, and this encourages um, us to um, shift towards healthier eating. And while the dietary guidelines for Americans may not be a fully whole foods diet that would be the highest bar that we'd would recommend, it does significantly move us away from our ultra-processed um, eating styles. Um, the, they often call it the standard American diet or the acronym SAD, um, where we are generally eating 55 to 60 percent of our calories from ultra-processed foods. So this score of 59 out of 100 actually shows improvement from previous years um, because we've reduced um, trans fats and sweetened beverages um, a significant amount, and we're actually consuming more whole fruits, a little bit more whole grains, nuts, legumes, and the good polyunsaturated fats. So we need to give ourselves as, as the American population some credit for improvements that we have made. But we still have, um, as a population, excesses, um, especially red and processed meats and sodium and too low in vegetables. So what are some keys to healthy living? So we would look at four main keys, um, and so sticking to these four healthy lifestyle factors doesn't have to cost a lot or require more frequent medical visits, but it can have a strong impact on personal and national health. And these four are not smoking, not being obese, getting 30 minutes of exercise um, daily as a minimum, and eating healthier, getting more fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and smaller amounts of meat. So congratulate yourself for the areas that you're doing well and decide on what areas that you want to work on next. Um, and um, uh, you know, maybe you've done well this past year with fitting in more exercise, um, but obviously since you're here today, maybe you want to work on the healthier eating part. And so uh, especially because we know we can't outrun a poor diet. So in addition to exercise, we need um, to nourish ourselves. And if we work... Um, bit by bit on these four things, um, we can help wipe out 90% of our diabetes risk, 80% of heart attack risk, 50% of stroke risk, and 33% of cancer risk. So by not following these guidelines, it actually accounts for about 78% of chronic disease in the United States. 
So this quest for healthier eating can be um, very overwhelming. We've got lots of different eating styles and diets, you know, paleo, keto, Weight Watchers, the Dash, vegetarian, all different kinds of things, and, you know, different people telling us that we should follow this diet or that diet. Um, the other interesting thing is that science, um, the science of nutrition is still evolving. And some previous guidelines turned out to be misguided, um, such as, you know, fat was the enemy back in the 70s. Um, and that actually led to excess carbohydrate intake. So in this quest for perfect dieting, um, um, sometimes we've gotten misguided in that counting calories or macros um, sometimes can drive us crazy and we um, get overwhelmed um, before we start. But what will um, healthier look like for you or will any of these eating styles help you get there? So today we're going to self-reflect on your current eating style and your health goal, be a critical consumer of health information, explore diets to be cautious about and why, review the top five rated healthy eating styles um, according to U.S. News and World Report, and begin creating your long-term healthy eating style. And we'll also be sharing resources to assist you in your action plan. So let's, um, we'd like to get some information from you today. So I'll let Randy um, launch our first poll. Yeah, and we want you to race to your computer screens right now, grab your mouse and your keyboard, because we want to know who's in our audience today. What is your moan, main motivation for being here? Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to prevent or manage a chronic disease? And that could be a cardiac issue, diabetes, cancer. Do you want to deal with a gastrointestinal intolerance? or fuel a sport, or a high energy need activity, or maybe it's something else. What reason do you have to come to want to talk to our certified nutrition expert today? And uh, I, in real time, I can read uh, your responses, and right now about one in 10 uh, are saying other. Uh, 3%, it's a gastrointestinal intolerance issue, about 6% fueling a sport or high energy need activity. And maybe you're thinking about starting your first 5K. The second largest is prevent or manage a chronic condition, and there are a lot of those. And thank you for your responses. I'm going to close the poll now and show you the results. Number one, with a majority, more than half of us are here because we want to lose weight today. Now, Jendi, does that surprise you that most people are interested in losing weight, or did you did you expect that that would be about the uh, the spread that we would have in our audience members today? I'm not surprised because a lot um, in our population, um, weight has become a challenge, and that's contributing to a lot of our other chronic medical conditions. So, managing weight is a part of either managing a condition or preventing a condition. So it's understandable that a lot of people are motivated or just because of um, how they want to feel. Excellent. Okay, so we got a lot of people who are going to try to lose weight. Uh, help us figure out how to do it. All right. So typically when I work with individuals and groups, I encourage you to think about where you are currently because I think that gives you some good guidance on selecting a plan that's going to be um, most appropriate and doable for you. Um, I'm going to just give you a few questions to think about for self-reflection and assessment. There will be, um, with the handouts available, a worksheet for weight loss um, that I would encourage you to consider um, filling out, even if it's just for yourself, but you could take it um, to share with your um, healthcare provider as well. So how did you get to your current weight or health situation, or what do um, I want to prevent? What changes have I tried in the past? What did? or didn't work? Was it balanced? Could I stick with it for the long term? What got in my way at that particular time when I tried it? Um, who can support me? Um, how would I need to set myself up to be successful? And this is one of the challenges in our culture that often it's the setting ourselves up well. And then how can I be kind to myself and set realistic goals or plans? If we are so um, black and white that we don't give ourselves a little wiggle room and be kind to ourselves about the positive things while we're working on the other things, um, sometimes we, we give up. That's so really interesting to see that word kind because we think of dieting and we think of punishing ourselves. I've never heard the word kindness used in dieting ever. Yeah. So there's a concept called acceptance-based um, therapy where we have to accept where we are and deal with that situation and feelings in order to um, work from there. And so we find that that's typically more successful. Um, we recommend that you should 
consult with your health care provider or other health professional before starting any diet, weight loss, or exercise plan to determine if it's right for you. And this is general information not intended to treat or diagnose a medical condition or replace your health care professional, but to help you tease out um, where you might want to go from here and get support. So let's look at some big picture guidelines first. Um, we'll get into more details as we go. So as we're seeking a healthy eating style, we want to think about does it follow a healthy eating pattern across your lifespan? Um, does it focus on a variety of nutrient-dense foods um, and amounts or portions? Um, limits calories from added sugars and saturated fats. Uh, number four, reduce um, sodium intake. Number five, shift to healthier food and beverage choices. And does it support healthy eating patterns for everyone in the household? Um, so consider um, um, shifting energy, you know, your personal energy from counting calories and macros, especially if you get frustrated by that. If it's a helpful thing and it's, it's giving you some guidance, that may be okay for you. But um, we're finding some people are spending too much time in that and not in just making some healthier shifts. So let's take we'll a look at our, another poll. Yeah. Let's do our second poll here to find out. Now, we've got over... 200 people in attendance here, and uh, we'd love to open up the microphones and have everybody talk at the same time, but obviously that wouldn't work, and so that's why we're using this polling mechanism. So our question for you, we want to know, where do you get your nutrition news? Do you get it from the major news outlets? You watch your CBS Morning News. Maybe you go to a government nutrition site. Maybe a diet program that you're enrolled in or thinking about enrolling in. Maybe you just get it from somebody in your family, your, your, your husband, your, your neighbor next door, maybe you get it on your online social chat. Where do you go to get information that you feel is trustworthy? And it's interesting, in our crew right now, very few people trust the government. The government nutrition sites have about a 5% response rate. Just above that is the paid diet programs. Next up, we love our family and friends to the tune of about 19%. Most of us, Jindy, are, uh, we are looking for our news from major news sources, which would be television, magazines, and online. And are those reliable places where you should go, or do you have suggestions for maybe a better way to get our information? Sure. Let's take a, take a look at that. So um, if we, um, I have some information on how to find reliable health information. And um, typically on internet sites, um, if we go to the slide, um, the best choices are .edu's. Um, .gov's can be, but we'll talk about how that can be problematic sometimes. Um, .orgs and with caution, .coms and .net. So the .gov's, I think where some of the caution people have is, is they don't feel that, um, you know, that's unbiased enough. Um, so, but I think if you look at multiple sources and you look for the evidence base, um, a lot of times .gov's can be um, actually quite good sources. Books, do you have a favorite, do you have a go-to internet site that you use and, and refer people to, like your, your well, favorite? What, well, one of my latest favorites I will have for you in a, in a few slides, it's nutritionfacts.org. Okay. Um, and so it's um, an independent site. Um, there are also um, uh, Harvard EDU um, is one that I use frequently. Um, so those are two um, two favorites right now that I um, refer people to for um, credible um, information. So with books, newspapers, and magazines, um, it is recommended that you um, check the um, author's credentials um, as well as they should also be from accredited um, organization or a university. Um, with television, um, you need to make sure it's um, well-researched information and repeatable studies. We'll talk in a moment a little bit more about um, the hierarchy of scientific evidence and, and how some of what the news media gets is um, the initial stuff. So in general, um, you want to look for reliable health information um, that is current, um, is referenced with cited sources, on, and ideally seek out multiple perspectives so you can um, get a well-rounded uh, view and be cautious if they're advertising or selling um, a product um, for profit. 
and so that may be the key. If somebody is going to make money, but from what you have done, be thoughtful about um, whether that's the best source of information. Correct. Yeah. So hierarchy of scientific evidence. So um, this is a construct that um, when you look at uh, research that's done, um, you know, we start out with expert opinion, case reports at the bottom of the pyramid, and then over time, as um, information is vetted, you get to the um, gold standard of the top two, the randomized control trials and systematic reviews and meta-analysis. So we really want to be looking um, as far as basing evidence-based um, nutrition decisions um, in this upper part of this construct because um, there's increased strength in the, in the data and decreasing bias. And if you look at the news media, um, uh, most of the reports in the media, seven out of 10 um, nutrition related um, reports um, come from these lower, um, you know, second tier um, type studies. So often the research is kind of cutting edge and interesting, um, but if you really look at the research, even those researchers are saying that this needs more um, additional studies to um, prove what we're discussing. Um, so yes, that often that hype is interesting and, and whatnot, but we, and some of it may be safe to try, but we also have to look at the big picture. So science marches onward. So let's look um, at some sci nutrition science updates um, that, you know, since I've been a dietitian for over 25 years, how we teach is different and I'm having to, you know, learn with you guys as well. But some of the things that we'll unpack here in the next few slides are quality of our food matters more than quantity. Um, and then the second on the nutrition update slides is that um, uh, healthy, low energy, um, uh, density foods help with weight loss and diet um, quality. And here's a five minute video that you can look at later that's from that nutritionfacts.org that you might find interesting. And then the third update is, is a calorie still a calorie regardless of the source? Um, and that ties in with a concept called the carbohydrate insulin model. So let's take a look at energy density. So this slide just shows examples of what's 100 calorie in carbohydrate, protein, fat, or alcohol. And we can see that um, when it comes to especially vegetables um, or fruit, um, we get large portions um, for that 100 calories. Um, protein's a little bit more concentrated. Um, and, and then fat is even more concentrated. So it's only like a tablespoon or a thumb-sized amount of peanut butter um, for 100 calories. Alcohol is interesting in that it's a little bit less calories per gram than fat, um, but it is still metabolized more like fat. Even though it comes from carbohydrate, our body processes it um, more like that. And beverages are also tricky because they provide calories um, that um, you know, we may not um, uh, feel very full with. So let's take a look at dietary quality. So dietary quality um, is a concept um, that when food comes in its natural package, it has um, a great pers um, you know, made blend of the nutrients that's needed to go with that food. And this is an example of whole grain um, via whole wheat. And the green bars um, show that whole wheat has, you know, this, this certain blend of all the natural nutrients, whereas refined flour um, has a lot of that stripped away. And then in rich, they're adding back certain things. Um, but, um, you know, even a child can tell you that they know it's healthy to eat a snack of an apple and a cheese stick or a handful of baby carrots with hummus instead of the packet of ramen or a bag of potato chips. But it's just not always what we want because we have so many tasty processed food choices. So how, how do we get to where processed foods like chips and ramen is the standard instead of those healthier snacks? So we've, we've allowed ourselves to be set up poorly by the food industry um, and um, you know, that affects the natural balance of the nutrients. And then we have allowed ourselves to be um, marketed to um, our wants versus reason. So let's take a closer look at is a calorie still a calorie? So there's some different factors that affect metabolism. Uh, we know if we have more lean body mass or muscle, um, it burns more um, calories than um, does fat tissue. Um, our natural hormones um, 
um, can affect our metabolic rate. And we're even learning that um, the bacteria in our digestive tract or our gut microbiome um, may have an impact on our metabolic rate. And that's a subject um, for a whole nother talk that maybe they could get an expert um, to explore um, if you're interested. And then there's the carbohydrate insulin model. So, and it, this ties in that food quality and the balance of macronutrients in a meal matter. So for example, highly processed um, carbohydrates um, in a, a soda or ramen noodles can cause excess insulin secretion to deal with this bucket of carbohydrates that our body um, sees coming, you know, compared to whole grain, veggies, or fruits that our body was designed to have to unpack more slowly. So those high processed carbs um, actually increase fat storage and increase hunger due to the fact that they cause an excessive release of insulin. So let's take a look at the conversion of food into blood sugar. And I think this helps a little bit in understanding um, how the balance um, aids in fullness and metabolism. So it shows that carbs, the red, are quicker release fuels than protein and fat, which are slow release and have less of an impact on blood sugar. So a balanced meal with lean proteins and vegetables um, and low glycemic carbohydrates and generous amounts of low carb veggies and some unhealthy or some healthy unsaturated fats uh, lead to a lower glycemic meal that will prevent less um, excessive insulin release that would contribute to fat storage. Whereas if we just have, you know, that soda by itself or we have that packet of ramen noodles by itself, um, that's going to be more problematic. So we can look at an example of how reducing added sugar makes a difference in your health. So reducing refined sugars reduces insulin resistance that can promote diabetes. It reduces inflammation that can promote heart disease, um, and then it can improve your metabolic rate. So our cartoon here um, shows a gentleman that um, is more apple-shaped than pear-shaped, and we know with that shape, you have more um, fat around your organs or that visceral fat, and a more fatty liver. Um, and fructose, which is the kind of um, sugar in most added sugars, as well as in concentrated fruit juices, um, does boost liver, um, muscle, and visceral fat. Um, and that is more um, problematic for health. So, Jandy, so not all fat is the same. Some fat is actually more dangerous to your body than others. Correct. So it depends on where the fat is. Interesting. Well, that means it's time for another poll. We want to find out uh, what you're thinking about diets that you've used. Have they worked for you? Have you tried them? So uh, it seems like every year there's a, a new diet, and we all race out to give it a shot, and, and it works, and then it doesn't work. And Have you tried the vegetarian or vegan diet? Have you tried the Mediterranean diet? What about a high protein or high fat? That would include paleo. Keto, that would include Atkins. How about Weight Watchers? Have you gone through that program? What about prepackaged foods where they take out a lot of the decision making? The HMR diet is one that, that Peace Health is an advocate of. Have you tried that or one of those other ones? Or perhaps something different. What kind of diet have you used that has worked for you? Very possibly, you've tried a lot of diets and none of them have worked for you. Click the other button and type your answer in the chat window and uh, we'll be able to read some of those. And in real time, I can tell you that it is a fairly even spread. We don't have a lot of vegetarians or vegans in our crowd right now, about 15%. About 26% of us have tried the Mediterranean diet. Next up, that paid food program. I'm going to close the poll now and show you the results. The most common one in our audience today, 42%, is the high protein or the high fat. That's paleo, that's keto, that's Atkins. And I know that you have, I'm just going to say some concerns about those diets. So anybody who clicked the high protein or high fat, let's listen really carefully to what Jindy has to say about that. So there's a lot of options in here, Jindy, vegetarian, Mediterranean, high protein, Weight Watchers, prepackaged foods. Are you going to talk about each one of these? We have about 10 different eating styles we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about some um, to be wary of or cautious with and um, some of the best ones. 
If you're not familiar with it, U.S. News and World Report puts out an annual best diet review. And while I admit they are a dot com, um, they um, uh, get a pretty impressive um, group of science um, uh, individuals. It's a, it's a group of qualified experts, including physicians, registered dietitians, and specialists in diabetes, heart health, human behavior, and weight loss. A number of them, I recognize their names um, from uh, program you know, continuing education programs that I have been to. Uh, U.S. News and World Report does this update every year, and they've been doing it for nine years. So it might be helpful in the future because we know science, you know, is updated with more good quality studies. Um, and, hey, Jen, um, I want so to read we, you a couple yes. of comments that uh, our audience has submitted. Anne writes, she says that we've lived with specific information for a long time, but new studies keep coming out to contradict that information, like the food pyramid that we all learned about in grade school. That's upside down now. There's so much new information, so much contradicts it. How do you determine what is right? You know, it sounds like there are people out there trying to cut their way through the confusion, and that's what they're here for today. Right, so it is challenging, and I, I even remember the the four food group model before we even had the the healthy pyramid. So um, we are shifting towards more of a healthy plate, um, and shifting towards more plant based foods, and you know, um, choosing healthy protein. So we're gonna we're gonna take a look at how these 41 popular diets um, across seven categories um, came out, and they came up with. Um, they constructed nine sets of rankings. So they came up out of these 41 diets. They have a list of the five best overall diets, the best um, commercial diets, best weight loss, best diabetes, best heart healthy, best for healthy eating, easiest to follow, the best plant-based, and the best fast weight loss. And you can go online and view all this. They have quite um, an extensive information about each of these 41 um, eating styles. Um, the scoring categories may be helpful to understand, and you have to drill kind of in to get those, so I'm sharing those with you here. I'm not going to read this whole slide, but just so that you know they were scoring, how did it go in short-term weight loss, um, so during the first 12 months, and long-term weight loss. So here they're talking significant weight loss for two years or more. Um, and then how did it do for diabetes, heart, ease of compliance, nutritional completeness, and health risks. Health risks is an important one because um, losing weight rapidly, if it comes with a long-term health risk, I don't know that that's in anyone's best interest. Right. So that's a challenge because sometimes we're so singularly focused on just losing weight or just getting those blood sugars down that um, we often lose sight of the big picture. And that can be hard when you're trying something new. Sometimes you do have to be somewhat singularly focused. But the challenge is for how long and at what cost. So um, we're going to look at five of the trendy diets or eating styles that you may want to approach with caution, and that includes a lot of the ones that some of you may have been trying. So I really encourage you to stick with me for the rest of the talk um, because I don't want you to throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, because you're probably learning lots of good things about vegetables and some perhaps some lean proteins that you can certainly still utilize that information, and it may be giving you a jump start. But we and Jenny, be before cautious. we start with uh, keto, let me just say that Bruce writes in that keto has been great for his long distance running. He no longer needs carbohydrate supplements, goos in the gels to do his marathons and his half marathons. Well, you know, he may want to talk to, um, you know, a sports um, nutritionist regarding that um, because we are missing out on nutrients for long term health. And I'll have some slides here in a moment about. Um, long-term benefit um, for um, uh, endurance athletes or um, uh, with um, plans that do include some carbohydrate. So we are going to look at ketogenic, Atkins, and paleo, and then two other that are not um, scored by U.S. News and World Report, intermittent fasting and the low FODMAP, because people may have some questions about those popular um, trends that are out there. But I want people to think Overall, we need to keep this bigger picture of a healthy approach because I like this quote from Madeline Fernstrom, um, and she said, "People are so desperate to lose weight that it's really weight loss at any cost because we're, you know, we're feeling desperate." And even rational people, um, you know, she says, "You know, normal thinking goes out the window." 
Um, so who cares how wacky or unhealthy your recommendation sounds to you? Pounds are coming off, you're happy, but your body might be. So that's where the approach always guarantees weight regain because we may not be um, uh, getting the big picture. And there are certain populations we have to be ex especially cautious with. So extreme plans would typically not be okay for children or youth, women who are pregnant or breastfeeding. Um, certain individuals, um, uh, if you have diabetes in our medication, we will um, talk in a moment about some exceptions for maybe newer type 2 diabetics or under medical supervision. Um, people with eating disorders, people with advanced kidney disease, and you may, um, some people are on certain medications that um, need routine balanced diets. So you definitely should discuss your situation with your healthcare provider or a dietitian that's knowledgeable with your condition before making uh, major dietary changes. So let's dive you know, into the 38th overall, and this is out of 41, if I remember what you said. 38th that's, out of 41. Yep, that's correct. So, and, and this is not necessarily new for the ketogenic in the ratings. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, what the different diets are and the claims and the rankings. So um, ketogenic is very low carb. So it's like 10 to, um, you know, 5 to 10 percent of calories or often 20 to 50 grams of net carb per day. It is very high in fat, 70 to 80 percent, and it's not a high protein diet. It's actually quite modest, um, 10 to 20 percent. Some of the research studies that have compared um, uh, different ratios of macros, um, they kept the protein at about 80 grams a day in doing the comparisons. Um, and initially, this eating style um, was used as a special diet starting in the 1920s to treat medication-resistant epilepsy in children where they didn't really have any other options. Um, and it um, uh, currently is being used as a fast weight loss diet. Um, it is um, claimed, in, and there is you know, some scientific truth to this, um, shifting um, to using fats um, for ketones as a main source of fuel versus um, glucose, lower circulating insulin levels and promoting weight loss. So people feel full and they may eat fewer calories and improve blood sugars. So as far as the rankings, it was the lowest of all as far as healthy eating. It was only 24th in diabetes. Um, it did, one area that it ranked well in was in best fast weight loss. But as our, at our next slide, we'll show at what cost. So it can be very hard to maintain this truly high fat diet. So if someone is truly doing ketogenic, it is quite high in fat. And the significant weight loss includes a significant amount of water weight, at least initially, as you use up stored glucose in your muscle. Um, and typically, you regain weight as you start eating some healthy carbs again. Initially, there's what they call the keto fog um, and some unpleasant symptoms that can be days to weeks, including hunger, fatigue, low mood, irritability, constipation, headache, bad breath. You know, some of the things like when we hear the ads for medications on the TV make us think, maybe I don't want to need to be on that medication. Um, so there can be some challenges there. There are increased risks for kidney stones, osteoporosis, um, gout, and nutrient deficiencies, primarily fiber, um, a variety of B vitamins, iron, magnesium, and zinc. And it's never safe for kidney disease, pregnancy, pre breastfeeding, children and adolescents eating disorders, type 1 diabetics, and um, it's generally an adequate carbohydrate for high energy sports. So little um, is known in the long-term safety compared to low-fat weight loss or even Mediterranean weight loss. And the um, uh, keto weight loss benefit seems to disappear over time. So yes, people do lose weight on it, um, but um, uh, long-term weight loss is, is currently something that they, they, you know, we definitely need more research for. Um, so as far as my expert opinion currently, um, following this strictly should be best safe for patients with ep epilepsy, um, and they would benefit from working with a dietitian that specializes in a ketogenic diet. Based on everything so, you just said, I would say lukewarm might be overstating your feelings about the keto diet. At least in its um, more, you know, strictly followed form. Yeah. If people yeah, are true. using it as a guide to get more vegetables and eat maybe less junk carbs, there might, you know, it could it could shift you in a direction. 
um, but there may be healthier ways to do that. So let's take a look at the Atkins diet. So this has been around um, since the 70s um, and ha now has some different versions. Um, it's considered um, 37th in the overall best diet, so pretty low ranking. There's different carb levels. There's the 20 and the 40 gram carb, and then there's a, a newer 100 gram net carb, and it has been used for fast weight loss. It's similar to keto, um, but it only does the strict usually for two weeks versus longer term. Um, and it does promote some similar weight loss, improved insulin resistance, and they say improves lipid levels. Um, but it was also low ranking in healthy eating, was 39th of 41, um, ranked quite poorly for heart health, so 37, and it, it tied a second for fast weight loss. So some of the concerns are the you know, difficulty to stick with long term. Um, it's high in total in saturated fat. Um, and saturated fat, we have significant ev evidence for um, damage to, to heart health. It's difficult to follow for long term, can be expensive, and typically inadequate carbs for high energy sports. Not safe for pregnancy, youth, people with diabetes that are on medications, and again, caution with kidney disease with an extreme low carb diet. So let's look at paleo. Paleo has been around for a while now, um, and this is a um, eating style. Um, that was often um, talked about as being like the caveman diet. So based on meat, fish, poultry, fruits and vegetables that were available pre-agriculturally. So it has some benefits in eliminating modern era processed foods, whole grains, um, but maybe goes too far in eliminating all dairy and legumes. Um, it's always okay to eliminate alcohol, coffee and salt, and refined oils. Um, um, they say that it um, you know, benefits type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and weight loss, and that you feel full and eat fewer calories. So it ranged between the 26th and 37th um, in all of the 41 calories, so wasn't as um, low ranking as keto and Atkins, Atkins and keto. Um, concerns are it can be harder to follow. It can be expensive because protein is an expensive component of a healthy eating style, especially um, if we're buying quality um, grass-fed uh, type proteins, it may be inadequate um, carbs for high energy sports and risk for certain nutrient deficiencies, calcium, vitamin D, and Bs. And if you really look at the research, there's significant regional differences um, in what a paleo diet um, truly was. And there is lackluster you know, information on um, long-term weight loss. So, you know, we've talked about three generally lower carb plans so far, um, but there's some interesting information when we look at um, dietary quality and athletic performance. And this is, again, at nutritionfacts.org. They have some nice TED Talk style, five minute um, approximate videos um, that really dive deep um, into the research. Um, so you may want to be cautious. Um, if you're um, trying to fuel a high energy sport. And again, we don't want to miss out on nutrients that are going to help us fight disease. Jen, we've got so a question yeah. from Brenda, and she says, based uh -huh. on what you, she's learned about the keto and Atkins, what you just shared, she wonders if it might be beneficial to start with keto or Atkins to initially lose weight quickly, and then when you hit that goal, switch over to something that might be healthier. Is that a strategy that might be effective? For some individuals um, that don't have a chronic medical condition, um, if they do that in moderation and specifically with dietary quality in mind and not doing a particularly high, um, uh, you know, high um, saturated fat or really high protein um, diet, that, that may um, uh, be a situation that you know, would be a, a safe way to use that. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at another um, uh, area to look at with caution. It's not necessarily an eating style, um, but intermittent fasting is um, used for weight loss. Um, and they pretty much say you can kind of eat whatever you want, um, but with um, the next slide of intermittent fasting, um, it shows that alternate days, um, there's different versions of it, so some um, advocates recommend alternate day fasting down to 25% of calories, that which might be maybe three to 500 calories for many individuals with no ref food restrictions. And then there's whole day fasting where you might fast for one or two days per week, 
uh, where it's either complete fasting or reducing calories to down to 25%. Or the third version is a time-restricted eating where you only eat meals between 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. So the claims are that it causes some um, good types of stress um, that um, can cause your immune system to repair cells, um, increasing lifespan and promoting metabolic, um, positive metabolic changes to lipids, weight, glucose, and others. This was not ranked by US News and World Report. And the concern here is most of the research has been done in animal models. So it's, there's not enough human research um, of um, significant um, uh, higher you know, um, quality studies um, to say that this is you know, where we need to go. But you know, we'll know more as they have more quality studies. Um, one of my concerns as a, a dietitian is how does this work, um, especially in families, because um, it's important for parents to be role models. Um, and um, so to see their parent fasting um, and not eating, um, you know, can send the wrong message um, to their children or even following an extreme eating plan um, could be a challenge. Uh, intermittent fasting would not be safe for pregnancy. Um, children or youth, people with diabetes that are on medications, kidney disease, eating disorders, and certain medications. Um, our next one is the low FODMAP. Again, not ranked by US News and World Report. Um, and it's more of an um, elimination diet to help tease out food intolerance and digestive problems rather than a fad diet or an eating style. Um, it does remove um, wheat, rye, or gluten ingredients lactose, certain fruits and vegetables, certain fibers, high fructose corn syrup, sugar alcohol-based sweeteners. And it's a two to six week of elimination and you are encouraged to eat healthy foods um, for the allowed foods and then you reintroduce the eliminated foods one at a time in, in increasing amounts to determine tolerance. So it's really used for people who have perhaps um, IBS or other um, gastrointestinal problems that with single elimination diets have only had marginal improvement. So this is a more comprehensive temporary elimination diet that might be helpful for some individuals, but not just meant to be followed long term. Um, and so it really may help people that have IBS or other um, you know, gas, bloating, abdominal pain problems that they haven't been able to tease out. Um, and then, you know, it's it's really um, recommended that if someone wants to do this, um, they um, you know, consider discussing it with their healthcare provider, um, get a book, um, perhaps work with um, a dietitian familiar with the FODMAP diet, because you really need to set yourself up ahead of time to be prepared and um, uh, do some record keeping on symptoms and do the reintroductions correctly um, to get some good um, personal data on how you're doing with that. And Jendi, both so, Lori yeah. and I would like to know, what does FODMAP stand for? Okay, so FODMAP, if you go to the next slide, we have okay. that answer for you. So, um, Ohio State put out a nice, um, you know, there's a number of different resources out there, but a good overview of the FODMAP diet um, is available with this handout. But FODMAP stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. So they're all- That's weird certain. because I was, that's what I was going to guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These things we didn't know we were eating in natural foods, um, but they're just types of you know, carbohydrates that um, some people don't digest well. Um, so there are some good resources there. So now what you've all been waiting for is to see what the five best ranked diets in 2019 are. And you know, if you're really seeking, I encourage you to go on the website and read more um, about them as well. But the top five diets were number one, the Mediterranean, number two, the DASH or dietary approach to stop hypertension. Number three is flexitarian, which is a uh, vegetarian style diet that does allow um, some animal um, meats periodically. And tied for fourth place um, is the MIND diet, um, which is a combination of um, DASH and um, Mediterranean, and we'll um, explain that more in a moment when we talk about each one. And the MIND diet tied with Weight Watchers. Um, and if we keep looking at the five best ranked slides, um, most commonly in the top five, 
Um, so these weren't just top, you know, just for one or two things. Mediterranean was number one in six of nine categories. Flexitarian was at least in the top five, six of nine times. Same with Weight Watchers. And Dash was in the top five, five out of nine times. And Mind, four out of nine times. So I think, you know, if we've got this many um, uh, people that, of, that are experts, um, you know, looking at it, it I would you know, encourage you to dive in and look at them a little bit yourself. There were a lot of um, things that these eating styles had in common. So if we look at some of um, what eating patterns include and exclude. So a healthy eating pattern on the next slide um, includes a variety of vegetables um, from all the subgroups. Um, and uh, dark red, green, um, and orange, beans, peas, and starchy and other um, fruits, um, especially whole fruits versus juices. Um, it includes some grains, um, but it doesn't have to be big portions. It can even be three um, modest servings of whole grains uh, per day. And they generally um, include um, some um, low-fat dairy products, cheese or yogurt, or maybe a um, vegetarian-based fortified alternative like soy milk or other plant-based milks. And then a variety of proteins, it might be seafood, lean meat, poultry, eggs, legumes or peas, nuts, seeds, or um, some soy products, and then uh, liquid oils, preferably minimally refined. And then healthy eating patterns limit added sugars, um, saturated fats, um, sodium, and alcohol if it's consumed. So the little picture of the spoons of sugar is the American Heart Association's guidelines. They are a little bit more strict on the amount of added sugars. Um, they go a little bit less than the 10% of calories. Um, so six teaspoons for women per day or nine teaspoons for men. And it shows there. So it, it might be you know, a good challenge to give yourself um, if you have a, a significant sweet tooth. So next, what do some of these five um, top-rated diets have in common? So what's in and what's out? Um, so what's in in the top-rated diets are whole foods, so less processed, and plant-based foods so for a high ratio of your volume. Um, and that's um, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, seeds, and minimally processed oils. Uh, lean proteins in modest amounts, uh, mostly fish, poultry, dairy, eggs, um, with a limited number of yolks. And then balanced um, nutrition um, and high nutrition density, um, developing a lifelong eating style versus patterns that you go on and off. And they also um, help you feel full um, for, um, you know, not just, you're not hungry right after the meal. Initially, um, these plans may take some, a little bit more time and um, planning and preparation, but with practice and some smart shopping and planned leftovers and smart dining out choices, they can be very doable, but it's not usually an instant change. What's out with these top five diets are processed and salty foods, um, red meat and processed meats, especially that are high in fat, um, animal fats that are high, um, highly saturated, which is animal fats in general, and then trans or hydrogenated fats, which have, have primarily been eliminated from our food system. There's a few um, food items that are still allowed to have it as they get reformulated. And then excess sweets and beverages are out. Um, restrictive dieting that leave you feeling hungry or focused on food is out, and then extreme diets that omit healthy food groups or are hard to stick with the long term. So basically, when it comes to diet or healthy eating, um, everything old is kind of new again because we're kind of going back to um, you know some less processed, older eating styles. So a number of you seem to be familiar with the Mediterranean diet, but it was best overall. It's an eating pattern that was based on um, Crete, Greece, and southern Italy in mid-20th century, where um, the populations have long life expectancy despite limited health care. Emphasized mainly fruits and vegetables, beans, nuts, whole grains, uh, fish and seafood, olive oil, water as a primary beverage, small amounts of dairy, especially cultured, and may include small amounts of red wine. Plus, it also um, generally has a you know, good social network and physically active lifestyle built in. It tends to limit red meats and sweets. Um, benefits are it's balanced. It can be followed long term. 
um, significant amount of research um, that um, it does promote weight loss, decreased diabetes risk, heart risk, heart attack, and second heart attack um, risk, so for people who've already had their first heart attack, and improving um, blood pressure, blood cholesterol. It's also been shown to be healthy in general and nurtures healthy babies and may slow memory loss. Um, so it has a lot of pl pluses. Um, we've included in on the materials that will be available after um, the program a number of resources, but I also wanted to give you some, because I know people like menus. So Eating Well Magazine has had put out um, in the past their seven-day Mediterranean menus at different calorie levels. Um, and even if you don't follow it exactly, it might give you some ideas for some healthy Mediterranean eating. Let's take a look at the DASH. So DASH stands for the Dietary Approach to Stop Hypertension. Um, and it generally focuses on foods you've always been encouraged to eat. Um, and it lowers blood pressure um, significantly. Um, and it emphasizes fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean protein, legumes, fish, and low-fat dairy. Um, uh, it's high in blood pressure lowering um, potassium, calcium, magnesium, protein, and fiber. It's low in saturated fat by cutting fatty meats, fatty dairy, and tr the tropical oils, as well as it cuts um, sugar-sweetened beverages and sweets, and it caps sodium at 2,300 milligrams, which is a teaspoon of salt, and followers eventually, um, if appropriate, lower to about 1,500 milligrams of sodium. Uh, this eating style is balanced. It can be followed long term. It lowers um, blood pressure and bad LDL cholesterol and actually helps increase the good HDL cholesterol. It can actually lower blood pressure within two weeks and eventually lower systolic or the upper blood pressure number as much as 8 to 14 points. So here's an example of really food as medicine. There's also um, two additional versions. Now, um, to address the need um, that some individuals need to lower carbohydrates more, um, so you can lower the carbs, um, for example, even 10%, and add a little bit extra lean protein or unsaturated fat, um, and that's still shown to even further lower blood pressure and decrease um, that bad LDL cholesterol and triglycerides and reduce cardiovascular disease. So let's take a look at flexitarian, and I know I'm covering these briefly because um, you're going to need to go dive into them a little bit more on your own. Um, so flexitarian is a semi-vegetarian, um, you know, maybe some meals vegan, um, but allows you to um, choose meat occasionally. Um, it generally encourages to, to work into it because not everybody can make a big change um, to vegetarian um, all at once. Um, it um, encourages less meat initially and including more plant, plant foods and allows for some flexibility and skill building. So in that version of kindness to yourself when you're trying to make a change, I think it's good that way. It has similar benefits to a vegetarian diet in uh, reducing weight, longer life, um, low heart disease risk, diabetes and cancer, and um, can be easier to follow. Um, if as you get to more vegetarian version, it is recommended that you take a balanced multivitamin for your age if you're staying on it long term. Also, the concept of, you know, um, oh, I'm going to have some meat, but maybe not binging when you have that. Just have some and enjoy it, but, um, you know, don't get into a, a, a binge over that. Um, it was trouble to find a, a graphic for this, and I would include on this graphic, I think they were missing fish in here. So somebody didn't edit their graphic very well. But I would um, definitely a flexitarian diet would include um, seafood there. So let's take a look at the ties for um, fourth place. Um, the um, um, MIND diet is one of them. And it was best num um, one of the fourth best overall. And MIND stands for Mediterranean um, dash intervention for neurogenerative delay. So it's basically a combination of the Mediterranean and DASH diet with a focus on certain um, foods that can lower risk for mental decline. So it emphasizes um, in more detail that you, you should have at, at least one serving of dark leafy greens a day, berries a minimum of two times per week, nuts at least five times per week, legumes at least five times per week, whole grains at least three times per day, and seafood at least a total of four to six ounces a week. Um, poultry, um, two servings 
a week. That would be about a three to four ounce serving. And then olive oil, a tablespoon worth at least daily. And if you drink up to five ounces of wine per day. So this eating style um, limits red meat, sweets, solid fats, full fat cheeses, fried foods, and fast foods. It is also balanced and can be followed long term. Um, and the, in, in the benefits, they showed that it lowered Alzheimer's risk by 35% in those who followed it moderately well, and up to 53% in those who adhere to it more rigor rigorously. Research is ongoing because this is one of the newer um, uh, eating styles out there. And a five-year National Institute of Health study is underway um, to understand the long-term impact of the diet. Um, currently, the research team notes um, in some of their papers um, are showing that they're finding it to be superior to DASH and Mediterranean for preventing cognitive decline. So let's take a look at um, the other tie for number four, Weight Watchers. So not only was Weight Watchers um, number four, four tie best overall, but it was number one for best weight loss and best commercial um, diet. And they've uh, changed up their name a little bit. Now they're actually calling themselves WW um, and with the phrase wellness um, that works. Uh, most people may be familiar with this national commercial plan. They have a variety of ways you can participate, whether you want a digital only experience online, personal meetings or personal coaching subscriptions. It does still use a point system that allows you um, to choose points for higher calorie foods whenever you like, so it has that flexibility. But it de definitely emphasizes healthy lower calorie foods with fruits and vegetables um, being um, a huge part of it. And then it now includes 200 other foods that are zero points, which um, include some proteins and other items like eggs, corn, fish, seafood, skinless um, poultry, non-fat plain yogurt. Um, beans and peas, lentils and tofu. It steers people away from um, foods higher in sugar and saturated fat. Um, it does also include behavioral management techniques that help with permanent weight loss. And some of the benefits are um, they generally are, are good for most anyone. Um, great for people with high blood pressure, high cholesterol or diabetes, and even for heart disease. And it helps prevent and manage diabetes in um, six to 12 month studies and does reduce LDL, uh, the bad cholesterol and triglycerides, and helps um, reduce the ratio of the bad cholesterol to the good cholesterol. So, so and I admit it was, mm -hmm. go ahead. This is going to be yeah. our, our last poll because we are running out of time. I do uh, want to have you answer a couple of questions from our audience members because we have several good ones here, and I, I would hate people yeah. to, to miss out on that. But please race to your laptop or your desk right now. You've heard what Jindy has had to say, uh, the good and the bad, the, the benefits, the drawbacks to, to a lot of these different polls, both the good ones and the bad ones. Which one sounds like it might be right for you? The Mediterranean, the, the dash? The flexitarian, that's a, a, a vegan who wants to still eat a little bit of meat, uh, mind or Weight Watchers, or an other one. And if other sounds right for you, go ahead and type it in the chat window. Chat window. Right now, about 7% of people say other. The DASH diet, even though it was ranked number two, not not uh, a lot of people here going for that, only about 5% right now. Flexitarian is 10%, uh, the mind and the Weight Watchers at 30%. But uh, I'm going to close this poll now and show you the results of uh, our audience. Almost half the people here are interested in this Mediterranean diet. They liked a lot of what they had to hear. A couple of questions I want to ask you right now. I could take a moment, Jendi. Uh, Julie wants to know if this MIND diet might be recommended for Parkinson's. What do you think about something like that? Yes, it, it would be recommended um, as a healthy eating style for someone with Parkinson's disease. But again, you should double check with your healthcare provider that is managing um, your um, uh, Parkinson's disease as well as your medications for Parkinson's disease. A couple of questions came in about oils. Joan says palm oil is often substituted for hydrogenated oil. Uh, but it's saturated fat. How safe do you think palm oil is for the heart? So um, these tropical um, saturated oils are certainly better than the trans hydrogenated that they used to have in them, but they are not as healthy as um, liquid oils like extra virgin olive oil or avocado oil. So 
usually they're in processed food. So this is that challenge, uh, how much processed food do we want to eat? So, um, so now and then having, you know, a treat food that has that in it, probably not a big deal, but if it's part of your um, daily diet, um, probably something to watch out for and get more um, uh, minimally processed liquid oils. One more question. A couple of people have written in about soy. Is soy, they say it's GMO, and is it healthy for women? What are your thoughts on how soy might play a role in dieting healthy? Sure. If someone um, is going to choose soy, um, I, you know, as far as my expert opinion, and I'd have to go back in and look um, um, as far as the details, but when I've looked at it in the past, generally, um, unless you have a health condition or a certain type of cancer um, where your oncologist is recommending you avoid all soy, um, then, you know, that you would want to follow that. But as far as natural soy um, from uh, uh, edamame beans, um, uh, tofu um, and soy milk, and it's not just in, you know, not like a lot of soy protein powders. Um, that should be okay. And you can always go organic. Um, so if I have people that are using soy on a regular basis in a vegetarian, or if they have a lactose intolerance and are choosing soy milk routinely, I say go with organic because that's going to part of organic means it cannot be GMO. I want to slip one more question in here real quick. How about if somebody? just can't give up their red meat, but they go 97% fat-free organic. Is that a step in the right direction? Will that work for them it's, for a lifetime? So it's a step in the right direction. And then I would add the other caveat is think about smaller servings. So if you're used to six or eight ounce cooked servings, um, you know, see if you can shrink that in half and use meat more as a condiment. Um, and you know, try a few vegetarian meals a week um, to get some other variety and get some beans in there. Um, so mo moderation and uh, better quality um, would be a good strategy. Excellent. And I want to remind everyone, all the questions that you submit, if we can't get to them during this live broadcast, we will respond to you afterwards. So uh, keep the questions coming. All right. Best fast weight loss. What do you got for us? Right, so we have a few slides to go, so if you have time to stick with us, um, hang on or you can listen later. So the best fat weight loss was um, HMR, or the Health Management Resources. It's a nationwide weight loss program that's medically supervised. They have either in clinic or at home options, and it does have um, prepackaged foods and shakes. Um, and Peace Health does offer this medically supervised in clinic um, program and it does perform very well among the other HMR programs in the nation. Um, typically three times as much weight is lost using a program like this that has the um, you know, behavioral management techniques um, and the, the meal replacements compared to traditional um, diets. Um, so you, know, you wanna make sure you're not just doing that and you know, really take in the education and the behavioral management techniques. Um, and they do have versions of it for those who don't need to lose quite as much weight, where you're definitely adding fruits and vegetables along with the packaged meals or shakes. And so number two um, was a four-way tie for fast weight loss with Atkins and Keto that we've already talked about in the past. Um, Octavia is Metafast, which is somewhat similar um, to HMR. It's a, a, um, a packaged food and does include some uh, uh, real food along with it, and then the Weight Watchers, which we had already talked about. But remember that you know the Atkins and the Keto um, got low scores on being healthy. So if you want to use some of, some concepts from those, but make sure you're getting some of the healthier things in it, um, you know that might be suitable if you don't have a chronic medical condition. So we have um, some information from our previous webinar, um, Food is Medicine, that was talked about the Mediterranean diet. So the Harvard Healthy Plate is um, probably a, a healthier version of a more Mediterranean plate compared to the um, myplate.gov. And then I've added um, our um, recommendations for how to use your hand as a portion control guide to make it practical. So feel free to look at that in more detail. And then as you're, you know, Working on constructing your healthy eating style, keep in mind some concepts. Try not to be too rigid with yourself. Um, you know, some people like to think the 80-20 rule. I'm going to try to eat healthy, less processed 80% of the time. Um, and 
when you're getting started, if you haven't been successful with other, you know, plans that are a little bit more of a big change, um, see how you can fit um, healthy into your lifestyle and your tastes initially so you can kind of stick with it. Um, and remember that quality matters. Um, so less refined processed foods. And that also proportions are, you know, balancing the ratio of foods on your plate and portion sizes matter. Um, and if we go to the keep in mind slide, we also are encouraging um, to go for a variety of colorful foods because we get um, lots of good nutrients in the different um, colorful fruits and vegetables. Um, even some grains are colorful, like um, forbidden rice is a purple color. Um, avoid hidden sources of fat, sugar, and sodium, aka processed foods. And um, ask your doctor if you need certain supplements, if you're um, on a more um, vegetarian diet or have certain food groups you don't tolerate and be mindful about all food choices. Um, so, you know, if you eat mostly at home, start there. And then you, if you eat out a lot, start there um, and think about how you shop. Ask for help um, to adopt and stick with healthy eating habits. Our social network makes a big difference in um, how healthy we choose to be in our physical activity and our food choices. So surround yourself or encourage your network um, to be healthier. And practice cooking your own food more often. And if you're a social person, try to find a way um, to do that with your social group. So think about what will healthier look like for you. Might it just be starting out with a higher ratio of nutrient-rich foods? Um, maybe it's really planning simple meals so you eat out less, um, reducing um, unhealthy, maybe sugary or processed foods. Maybe you're a meal skipper and you need to think about meal frequency or timing. Um, or maybe portion control is one of your big challenges. Maybe beverages. Maybe you're a Starbucks, um, you know, mocha person and you need to make some better beverage choices. Um, but also keep in mind some other lifestyle things like getting your activity and maybe even better sleep because that can make you help have more energy to be active and make healthy choices. So think about taking action to shift um, to long-term healthy eating styles. So you can certainly um, do the self-assessment um, on the extra handout that we have the worksheet for weight loss for you. Um, and then decide what's gonna, what you think is going to work best for you. Are you a person who um, previous more extreme attempts have not worked for you so, and maybe you need to go slower and um, you know get certain things down first? Or maybe you've had a scare and you've had your first heart attack and you really um, you know, need to go big and make some, um, you know, healthy changes in a, a bigger, quicker way. Um, and you may need to ask for help to stay on track or, um, you know, think about how can I make, even though I want to make a big change, how can I make it simple and set myself up? Think how you want to track your progress. If you get frustrated with um, detail macro counting on my fitness pal or something, then maybe something where you're just taking food photos or um, you know, doing simplified record keeping to help you stay aware versus um, something that's gonna make you go crazy. Um, and think about regularly reassessing, whether it's before a grocery trip um, and you know, if you had an unrealistic plan, um, tweak it. Um, or if things are going really well, then challenge yourself to go the next step. So we have, as mentioned earlier, we have the resources and handouts. Um, they'll be available soon. The recording should be available at least by next week, maybe sooner. And you'll have access to the presentation slides, the overview handout with the resource list, um, a one-page summary of each of the um, top uh, three type of diets, Mediterranean, the Heart Healthy Dash, and a vegetarian. It's not exactly the flexitarian because I couldn't find a, a one-page sheet on that, but I have a vegetarian one for you. And then we have that weight loss worksheet. So I think that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you for joining us today. Randy? Yes, we're very grateful. And keep in mind, um, as Jindy said, we have these, uh, uh, all of the resources that you saw today will be available for you to review. So if you didn't take notes or if you missed it the first time, uh, you'll be able to come back and review it again. And we have all of the handouts and summaries so that you can do this. Keep in mind that 
we have a lot of possessions in life that we value a lot. We have cars, houses, cell phones. The most important possession that you have is your body. That's the one thing that you're going to have for your whole life. So invest some time, do some research, and make sure you're treating your most important possession uh, with the attention it deserves. You can sign up for a monthly e-newsletter, which will give you alerts about future webinars, also health news, special offers, and local events. And to do that, just go to peacehealth.org forward slash email, or you'll get a post-webinar survey, and you'll be get, have the chance to do it there. Thanks so much. Let us know what you think. Did we give you the information that you wanted? We sure hope so. And if not, engage with us. We're here to help. Have a great rest of the day, everybody. Thanks for joining us.